All right, so we see that there is a number of the time value of money functions here. Uh, but let's just say that we have a problem, and, and we'll just start working through some problems just to kind of illustrate how we use the, the calculator. Okay, now um, one thing we have to keep in mind is that all of these buttons right along here is that there are five variables here. Right, we have n, we have n, i over y, pv, payment, and future value, okay, fv. Now, this is basically what we're setting up here is we're setting up an equation with five variables. Okay, now, whenever we set up an equation with five variables, you know, if we're solving for that with a single equation and five variables, we can only have one unknown. So, basically, what we're saying here is that if we have these five right here and we're trying to solve, say, for present value, is that we have to have a value that goes into each of these four others, okay? So, N here is basically, we can think of this uh, with our time value money formula, right? We have PV equals future value divided by 1 plus R to the T power, right? That's the standard notation that we typically will use. Um, is that that N here, that's going to be our T, right? That's our number of time periods until we receive the payments. This I over Y here, that is actually telling us that is our interest rate. Now, when we put R over here, right, is that we use that in decimal place, right? So let's say we're saying 5%. The R we're going to put in here is, is at that 0 0.05. However, when we use I over Y, we're actually going to put this in as 5%, right? We're just going to hit 5 and put it in. And that is, is a little bit of a distinction, and it, it will get a little bit tricky, but that's what, why we're, we're, we're doing that, just to, to keep things straight, okay? Um, and then the next part is that we have our present value, which is set as a present value. This payment button, this is basically our annuity portion. So this is saying this is how many payments that we have. And we'll illustrate this in, in some examples here coming up. And then we have our future value, okay? Um, so we know we go from present value to future value. Now, one thing that the financial calculators do that, uh, that we don't do actually when we're, we're doing the math like this is if we have a positive future value, let's say our future value is uh, $1,000, okay, and we come up with it and say, all right, our present value of this is, say, $750, okay, is the way it's actually going to pop up is it's going to pop up with a negative sign, okay, and that's just, I know that might seem kind of confusing, but the reason it pops up with a negative is because if I want to receive a payment in the amount of $1,000 in however long that's going to be, I need to pay $750 for that right now. So that's why it's coming out as a negative. Now what you'll see is that if you're solving for something else and you put in positive values in FV and PV, is that it will come up with an error. Okay? Now, let's go and just, just work through an example here right now. Let's say that, that we're given an example here of we're, we're trying to find, um, so we have $1,000 as a future value, we have $750 as a present value. Let's say that, right, our interest rate is at 5%, okay? And we're trying to solve for T, right? How long will it take for us to, to turn that, that $750,000 into $1,000 at 5%, okay? How long will it take? Now, as we're saying here, we have four variables and we have this extra, this payment here, right? So what do we do here? That's an annuity portion. That is basically saying we have continuing payments. So our payment here is actually going to be put in as zero, okay? So um, simply put, the way we're going to do this is we're going to enter the number that we're looking at and then hit, so we're going to enter the number first. So we'll start here at the future value. So we're going to type in the 1,000 and then we're going to hit the future value button right here. Right, and you notice that it says now FV is equal to 1,000, right? so we know it's stored. And then we hit in the zero for our payment, we're going to hit the payment button. Okay. And then we enter the 750. Okay. And I'm going to enter this as a positive value just to, to show you real quick. And then we enter that as a, as a present value. We hit the five as the interest rate. Okay. And so now we have all four of these things set. So the next thing I have to do if I want to do N is I have to hit the Compute button up here. So I hit Compute, N. And notice how here it says Error 5. That's because we did not enter our present value as a negative number. 
So we'll just enter the, we'll just il illustrate this again. Right, we have 1,000 is our future value. Zero is our payment. Our present value is 750, and we enter as a negative here. And then our interest rate is five. So we then compute our number of time periods, and that tells us that it will take 5.9 years. So basically, what we're looking at here is that the the essential part is is that we have basically five variables running along here and we are we have to insert a value into each one of these okay if we're solving for one if we're solving for i over y that means we have to have a value for n pv payment and future value if we're solving for payment we have to have a value for future value present value i over y and n